So, uh, not clapping. This shirt is really tight. Holy smokes. The other one was like this performance clerical shirt I've mentioned in the other. Oh. Make note of that. But this is like, nope, it's the actual size. I'm not gonna clap. I can't hardly breathe. I'm getting faint. This is me not clapping. Head to, okay, here we go. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. So I was talking with some people the other day, and they had gone through the Bible in a year, and they had said, you know, it's so it's so frustrating, they said, to, to be reading through the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, and to see how, in some ways, I guess they say, unfaithful God's chosen people are. And they asked the question, they said, um, so why did God choose the Jewish people in the first place? It seems like, man, you're just choosing these, these people who are completely unfaithful to you again and again and again. So why did God choose the Jewish people? Like what's so great about the Jewish people? These people who had said this, they had actually gone through the Bible. So they knew the answer, even though they knew the, they knew the problem, but they forgot the answer. We'll say it like that. They knew the problem. The problem is, wow, here are these God's chosen people. They're unfaithful again and again and again. So why in the world did God choose them because they're not that great. So that's not meant to be a slam towards any of our, our Jewish brothers and sisters. That's actually, uh, you know this. So this, this is actually in the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter seven, uh, where the Lord God speaking through Moses even says this. He says this, he says, um, you're a people sacred to the Lord, your God. That's awesome. You're a people sacred to the Lord, your God. For he has chosen you from all the nations in the face of the earth to be a people peculiarly his own. So we know this, right? The Jew, Jewish people are the chosen people. That, that's, that's just a fact of history. It's a fact of our belief. So God has chosen you, Jewish people, to be peculiarly his own. But then it goes on to say in verse 7, chapter 7, it was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you're really the smallest of nations. It was because the Lord loved you and because of his fidelity to the oath he had sworn to your fathers that he brought you out with his strong hand from the place of slavery and ransomed you from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So who's, who, who, whose fault is it or whose merit is it? It was not because you're the greatest, not because you're the best. It's because the Lord loved you and he ransomed you. And that's just, this is incredible. You know, so often we think that the New Testament is the book of grace, right? The New Testament is the era of grace. Yet very, all the way back here in one of the first five books of Moses, Deuteronomy, this is all grace. In fact, uh, chapter nine, Deuteronomy reiterates this. It says that after the Lord God has thrust them out of your way, the people in, in the promised land, do not say to yourselves, it is because of my merits that the Lord has brought me in to possess the land. For it is really because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord has driven them out before you. No, it is not because of your merits or the integrity of your hearts that you are going to take possession of their land. But the Lord your God, he's the reason, right? He's driving those people out and putting you in, not because you're amazing, not because you're even better than them, because he has chosen to love you. Now, why did God choose to love the Jewish people? Why didn't he choose to love these other people? Again, keep this in mind. It is, <laughs> God is a God of love. God is love. So he actually does love those other people. He loves everybody. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living, as it says in the book of Wisdom. Also, Timothy, St. Paul writes to Timothy, says that God wills all people be saved. So God doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. But as God is revealing himself and God is revealing his mission, his plan to save the entire world, remember, the, he chose the Jewish people and said, yeah, I'm going to give you a land, give you a, a dynasty, and through you, the entire world will be, will be blessed. So ultimately, the plan is to bring all human beings under one, into one kingdom. But he's got to start somewhere. And he starts with the Jewish people. And as we note in the Catholic Church, the Jewish people remain God's chosen people. Now, the, all those who are baptized get to be part of God's family, which is, I'd say, even more incredible. But with the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Jewish people do not cease to be the chosen people of God. Now, God's plan is that what started with them will also be fulfilled in them, right? What started with them is that they would also come to recognize that Jesus Christ is the Messiah as well. And they would ultimately be brought into that fullness of God's family through baptism and through declaration of faith in Jesus Christ. That, that's his ultimate plan. But God had to start somewhere. And he started with the chosen people. Why? Because he loves them. 
You know, the question keeps coming back is like, okay, so if that's the case, um, but why do they choose people who are so unfaithful? And I would say, okay, exactly. Why did God choose people who are so unfaithful? Like the person talking to you right now. Which is just reality. Remember what St. Paul wrote to the Romans, chapter 5. He says, Only with difficulty would you find someone who has the courage to die for a good person. God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That while we were still his enemies, Christ died for us. That while we still have broken hearts, God the Father has declared over us through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are my beloved children, my adopted sons and daughters. And yet, look at the history of my life and it's a story of having been chosen and being unfaithful. My story of my life is as having been anointed by the Holy Spirit in power and in grace, in truth, in mercy, and me turning away from God. So when my friends ask me, Ah, why does God choose the Jewish people? It seems like they fail over and over again. Like, what's so great about them? Well, this is the story of mercy. This is the story of grace. This is the story of our God who is so good. He chose them because he loves them. He loves the Jewish people. And he chose you because he loves you. He loves you. And yes, the whole Bible is the story of the Jewish people being chosen, being faithful, and then being unfaithful. (laughs) And the story of my life is the story of being chosen, being faithful sometimes, but then being unfaithful. But God, who is faithfulness, God is faithful and true, who is love. His love has not wavered for his Jewish people. He wants them all to come to know Jesus Christ. And God's love has not wavered for you or for me. When I turn my back on what I know to be true, when I say no to his will, when I say yes to my own self-will, Jesus Christ has chosen you even when you didn't deserve it, even when I didn't deserve it. So once again, why did God choose the Jewish people? Knowing that they would continue to turn their back on him for the same reason that he chose you and chose me, knowing that we would continue to turn our back on him. And so when we are reminded of that love, we're reminded that actually I don't want to turn my back on the Lord. I want to turn my face towards the God of love and let him bring me to himself once again. Anyways, that's all of it. That's all I got today for all of us here to Sense Presents. My name is Father Mike. God bless.